Let's, um, oh yeah, one problem in the homework was asking you to, to construct a concrete example. And um, I haven't seen many concrete examples of that bifurcation from nothing to four, to four equilibria. Um, but I think only one, one of you actually wrote an explicit example. So um, you know, if you think about making up an example where uh, of, of, of a one-dimensional system, so just a one equation, right? Then the, nu the number of equilibria is given by the zeros of this function, right? So all you have to do is kind of imagine this function. Uh, the right-hand side is a function of x plotted that has, depending on the parameter a, it has no zeros. Then when a is zero, it has one zero, and then suddenly it has four zeros. So, uh, you know, it should be something that's kind of way up here for less than zero, right? It should be something that is, so no equilibrium. Something that touches just at one point, so one equilibrium. And then it has four zeros for a positive, so it has to look like something like this, right? For instance. So how can you but these four points have to kind of emerge from the origin. Because they cannot just pop up from nowhere. So they have to so that so anyway, that's kind of how I would think to uh, construct such an example. And again, because these guys have to kind of start from zero, they, the smaller A is, the closer to the origin are, right? So this could actually be A, and this could be, I don't know, 2A or something. Or actually, the example that I, I'm thinking of is, is probably a little bit... So, I'm thinking of x squared minus a and x squared minus 2a. You know. This clearly, when a is negative, has no zeros. Yeah? When a is zero, it's just x to the fourth. When a is positive, it has plus or minus square root of a and plus or minus 2 square root of a. And these are kind of just moving away from the origin. So, so for this system, you have bifurcation diagram that start, you know, nothing before and okay and of course I think you can also figure out which one's stable and which one's unstable, right? So this on this picture which one would be stable? <laughs> The first and the third are stable, right? And uh, the second and the fourth are unstable, sinks and sources. So, so I don't know if you use different. Well, we okay. We call them. Um, I'm sorry. We we'll call them uh, sinks and sources. We're going to talk about stability today more. So, so this would be a source, sink, source, sink. Right. Anyway, the question was to give a concrete example, not uh, so. Um, <clears throat> okay. Well, let's go back to two-dimensional and actually, I think, well, two or three, you know, several-dimensional systems. So not just um, like that. So let's talk a little bit about stability. <coughs> of equilibria for in general so no not not um, any specific dimension um, 
And that's something that we kind of uh, brushed on um, in chapter 8, but I think we moved to talk about bifurcations. Okay, so um, we're going to make a definition here. So we're, we're really talking about autonomous systems. X prime equals f of x. And um, x star, uh, so x star is an equilibrium. So x star is uh, said to be to be stable okay um, if um, the solution the solutions x of t starting in a neighborhood of x star stay in stay near x star for all times okay there's a more precise definition but here's the rough and I'll, I'll tell you in a second but here's the rough idea in the phase portrait if you have a sta um, equilibrium here what this is saying is that um, if you start, I mean, there is a neighborhood of this equilibrium for which if you start in that neighborhood, you never go like a, a way, you know, at, at any distance from this point. So you stay within a certain distance, finite distance from this point. So the picture really um, should have, I mean, it would be ideal to, to say that, yeah, I have a neighborhood and we didn't talk much about neighborhoods, but what's a neighborhood of a point in, in the two dimensions or three dimensions? Or there, so, so, so that set contains at least a ball of radius, a small radius, right? And also we consider, we usually consider this to be open neighborhoods, so um, in other words, I have, you know, I have a ball and I have something maybe bigger, but I don't have, I don't know, the isolated points outside of this point. Okay? So, um, so this is saying that if I, there is a neighborhood that if I start here, you know, I may actually not go towards this point, you know, but I will not go away from this point either. Okay, so. They're, they're actually the precise definition is the following, and it's based on this picture. Okay, so um, more precisely, um, for each um, open neighborhood. I think we we use this uh, script O's of x star. There is a neighborhood O one of x star. So the um, bigger neighborhood is O, and the smaller neighborhood is is O one such that if x0 belongs to this smaller neighborhood implies or guarantees that x of t that's the solution with that initial condition belongs to O for all times okay? That's kind of a, this is the precise definition of a table point. 
and this really is not the same as the um, sink. Okay, the sink concept was what was that concept saying? Everything approaches that point, right? Here is all it's saying that it's not um, departing, it's not leaving that, you know, it's not going away from that point, um, but stays nearby. Okay, and what's the what's an example of a, a stable equilibrium that's not a sink? Periodic when you have periodic uh, solutions, right? So, so that x prime equals um, y and y prime equals negative x. You know, zero is a, is an equilibrium. But you see, the solutions are never they are not. You know, solutions that start nearby this point do not go towards the point, but stay nearby. In fact, this is a you know, it's probably not the best example of, of something that's not a sink, but still stable. Okay, because in this in this example, what would be the relationship between the neighborhoods? So, for instance, if you want to stay within a certain neighborhood of radius one, for instance, then you have to start from. the same neighborhood, right? Because this always stays the same radius. Okay? So this is an example of a stable equilibrium. Because every time you right that's how you should read this definition. It says that you want to kind of capture the solutions for all times to be in a neighborhood O then you have to find possibly a smaller neighborhood for the initial conditions. Okay? And in this case it says, well, it's basically the same. Um, you don't have to just go any smaller. I mean it can be initial conditions in this radius to get to stay in that neighborhood. But can't you find an O inside the periodic function? So that anything that starts inside of that then goes outside. Then it goes outside, you said? Or doesn't go outside? If you, if you pick an O inside the periodic function, periodic start, solution. start inside that, yeah. then it goes up to the periodic function, which is outside of O. Then it's not a stable equilibrium. Right, so the, the other example is uh, that something that's not stable is, uh, what was that example? Um, well, I. You know, I'll just draw the picture instead of writing the... So, you're right. If, if I have something that's... There is a periodic solution, but then everything else kind of goes up towards it. <coughs> right? Then this point is not an, a stable equilibrium. So, no periodic solution has a stable Okay, let's let's be careful. So so this let me let me just write not a stable equilibrium. I think the we have to be careful what we what I mean we're talking about the periodic solutions or are you talking about the equilibrium? Okay? At this point we're talking about the, uh, the equilibrium. Okay, the, the, the this is a periodic solution and this has its own stability properties which we'll talk about we will call this to be sort of a stable solution. Well, unless things from outside go away, but if they go towards it, then we'll call this stable. Okay? But I guess your question is: if I have a periodic solution somewhere, right? This means I have an equilibrium inside. Okay? Uh, we haven't proven that statement that I made. Maybe I misunderstood you. I, I, we were looking for some an equilibrium that wasn't the same. But was stable. Correct. And this, in this case, that's the that's uh, that's the case because pick because because all of these things are periodic solutions. Okay. And all, all I was saying is that how do you prove this? How do you show that 
given any any s neighborhood that you want to kind of encapsulate all the solutions, that you can find possibly a smaller neighborhood of the initial conditions. And I said that in this case, you just take it to be the same as the target neighborhood, because because of the way the solutions, you know, in this particular case, behave. Okay. Whereas, whereas here, if I want to get a target to be any smaller than this radius where I have a periodic solution, then solutions escape that. Okay? So it's not a stable. Okay? And the, of course, the other definition is the um, definition of a s equilibrium being, so this is said to be asymptotically stable. If there exists a neighborhood um, I think we still call it A uh, excuse me O of X star such that uh, Starting in that neighborhood guarantees or implies that the limit of x of t is actually x star at infinity. Okay? So this is precisely that uh, concept of a sink. Well, so this. This would be the sink in excuse me, sink in the nonlinear context. I mean, we talked about sources and sinks. Um, well, I think we talked about nonlinear context as well. Um, but it just says the following: that if I have some equilibrium here, x star, that attracts solutions that start in some neighborhood of the point. Okay? So it's enough that every point here kind of goes to, uh, every initial point in this neighborhood kind of approaches that equilibrium as time goes to infinity. But this doesn't disqualify, I mean, doesn't uh, prohibit points that are outside of a certain neighborhood to be to go somewhere else. Okay? So this guy could go, I don't know, to some, something else. But the key is that there is a neighborhood. There is a, there's, there's a uh, not necessarily a ball, but just some some open neighborhood where this uh, property holds. Okay, and that means sink. And of course, um, a source would be the case when its t goes to negative infinity instead of t goes to positive infinity, okay? because then it goes away from that point. Okay. Um, now there's one more very important concept here um, that I want to talk about, and this is called this is called the um, uh, alpha limit set and omega limit set. of a solution okay so let me let me uh, first talk about the omega limit set and you'll see um, so a point, uh, let me call it uh, x, um, y, okay, let me call it y, actually, why don't I call it, okay, let's call it omega, and 
in Rn is called uh, omega limit point for a solution x of t of, of course, x prime equals f of x, that's our system, always if uh, there exists a sequence Tn of times, or you know, T, T usually stands for times, right? So of times going to infinity such that x of Tn. So this is the solution of, in question at time Tn. So the limit as t goes to infinity, as n goes to infinity, is actually this. Okay. So how is this different than, or how does it fit in the actual stability of things? Let me, let me introduce also the omega limit set of x of t is, uh, let's call it omega, which is all points, so all points, omega is omega limit point for x. So, I mean, roughly speaking, what we're looking at is a solution of, the, of our differential system, so a trajectory, okay? And we're asking, what are the points that are, can be approached by this, uh, by this solution as t goes to infinity? So, if I have a sink, if I have an asymptotically stable you know, something like this, right? So asymptotically stable uh, equilibrium. Then what's the omega limit set of any solution that goes towards that point? Hmm? <coughs> so this is x of t, right? What are all all the point? I mean, what are the possible points that are sort of approached by the solution as time goes to infinity? Well, anything here? No, because this goes towards this point, so it eventually it always goes away from any other point, right? So this point is the only one that can, is is actually in the omega limit set. Okay, so it's just a, it's just one point. Okay. Whereas, so this is in the case I have, I have an uh, asymptotically stable. So this, these are just examples of omega limits, limits, limit sets. Uh, so this would be a single point, right? How about um, the other situation when I have some closed periodic orbit, right? And maybe I have, well, and then I have solutions that are kind of approaching this periodic point, this uh, periodic orbit. So it should be going this way. Mm -hmm. So here I have one equilibrium, here I have a periodic solution that, appro that attracts all these solutions. I mean, not, not all of them, but just one solution. So we're talking about the omega limit set for this solution. Yeah. <coughs> right. The periodic solution would actually be, the periodic orbit would actually be the omega limit set. Why? Well, take any point on this, right? Take any point on this, on this, uh, on this, um, 
periodic solution. Is this the limit of x of t for some t is going to infinity? In this picture. Well, you can see kind of, you can start building the points. So let's say t0 is here, right? t0 is here. So this is x of t0, x of t1. Every time this kind of goes, revolves around this, uh, this periodic solution, there's going to be another passage even closer, right? This is because that you have that uniqueness. You, you cannot self-intersect. So this is in the plane. It, it wouldn't work in three dimensions, right? But in the plane, you see the, the next time you, the, the solution will have to squeeze and get closer and closer, right? Now, um, so it, it, is, it is feasible, to, I mean, it is kind of uh, conceivable that this, this solution goes closer and closer, and actually this point is a limit point, okay? And so is every other point, right? So then the omega limit set is actually a periodic solution. Okay. All of this will become relevant uh, when we talk about the, the, the method that we're going to you know, introduce in a second, Lyapunov method for stability. Um, okay, so, there's every, so this is going to be a limit of x of tn as n goes to infinity, or tn goes to infinity. And every point in this orbit will be the, will be the same. Now, of course, you you could have com you could have more complicated situations. I mean, you could have as complicated as you. For instance, if I have two, if I have uh, two solutions like this, two periodic solutions. That's actually, let's see, that's actually, well, let, let me do it in the same direction, you know. So let, let's, let's imagine we have something like this and we have a, a solution starting from inside here, right? Then what's the possibility for the omega limit sets for this for a solution starting inside the smaller periodic solution well it would actually go towards this periodic solution right or it might go towards a smaller periodic solution if there isn't a smaller periodic solution smaller meaning that you know it's it's uh, enclosed in this in this region right or it might be a point it might be an equilibrium point Okay. Points outside here again, they might have this as being an omega limit set, or that being a, as an omega limit set, or there might be some additional in, uh, equilibrium in between where these things goes to. Okay, so all of that is, is uh, are possibilities, and the only way you can exclude them is sort of by having additional information, whether you have uh, null clines or you have. Well, you maybe have information about all the periodic solutions, or all the equilibrium, right? I think all the equilibrium is probably the easiest. Um, similarly, the alpha limit set is of a solution, x of t, is uh, okay, what's what's capital alpha? <laughs> okay, so we'll just use A as um, the set of all points in Rn such that alpha is a limit as Tn goes to negative infinity. If there is a sequence of Tns, I'm sorry, going to negative infinity, such that the limit of the solution is actually um, that, that point. And then you take the collection, of, the collection of all points. So in this picture, if I have to start, let's say I'm starting here, and I'm going, as t goes to infinity, I'm going towards 
the bigger one, right? So I'm going away. Um, well, I'm going towards the the one outside. Then this would be the omega limit set, right? And if I were to go towards negative infinity, right? Then I would be approaching this alpha limit set. Again, okay, keep in mind the alpha limit set, omega limit set could be actual points or could be periodic orbits. Uh, could be actual equilibrium or periodic solutions. Okay. And uh, I think we'll probably be able to prove that statement that in, in the plane, if you have an omega limit set, it has to be either a periodic solution or an equilibrium. Okay. Can you imagine something else? I mean, can you imagine? Maybe you can, and I can. Um, having a solution that has, so in other words, we don't want solutions that just go to infinity, right? We want solutions that stay somewhere, somewhere bounded. Then we ask ourselves, you know, what are the possible limit points for that solution? Well. It would be hard to kind of imagine um, let's say two points, two equilibrium points that are part of the same uh, solution, so the same omega limit set. Why, why, why would two points not be a good choice? Well, that solution would have to travel, visit as close as, as you want each of those two distinct points, right? You see? so. There are lots of things that can be said about uh, omega limit sets. So, so assume I have a solution that stays bounded as t goes to plus infinity. Let's let's imagine like this. So, what does it mean stays bounded? It means that there is some region where once the solution gets in, you know. Let's say it can never escape. So the direction fields are always inward. Okay? This means as t goes to infinity, the dynamical system will have to do things inside there and, and trajectory would stay inside. Right? Then the claim is that, you know, if there are two points, if these two points are uh, part of the omega limit set of a particular solution, so the solution starts here, right? And it has to go and visit one point, right? In fact, it has to visit each omega limit set infinitely often, right? Closer and closer together. Right? Then it would have to kind of bounce between two distant points, right? And the only way this, can, this bounce can happen without self-intersections is really if you have some periodic solution that goes from one to the other, right, in the limit. Okay, all of that can be can be proved in you know with um, so so it's either like this or it's like this, right, or it's it could be like this, you know, where it goes towards something. That is becomes periodic, okay. Uh, that's not supposed to be any phase, but looks like a phase. Um, all right, so equilibrium, equilibrium, and this is periodic orbit. So let's say uh, what I was going to say. Assume uh, this stays bounded. Uh, then the omega limit set a of x of t is either an equilibrium or a periodic orbit. Okay, 
But this is this is in the in the plane. In the plane. The moment you move away from the plane, uh, things become extremely complicated. I mean, you can have a bounded solution that you know that does this thing, right? Which, sorry, that that does exact like things like this, and this would be sort of the um, cases when when you have a chaotic behavior. So we'll talk about this, I think. Hopefully, towards the end. Um, okay. Actually, on the on the cover of the book is the same picture, right? But in the plane, this cannot happen. Okay. Just because you don't have, you are not allowed to self-intersect, and then you don't have enough room to move around solutions. Okay. All right. So that's actually one thing that I want to I want to um, prove. Okay. Um, at, at, at one point. So, I'm going to prove it once once we kind of get the, the tools, the techniques of approving such a, such a thing um, more, more, become more familiar with those tools. So, let me um, talk about this this method called the Yapanov method for stability. Okay, so that's um, a Russian mathematician uh, that developed this um, method, and It is kind of a useful but not universal method. So it's like I think it's like everything um, that you've learned in differential equations that there is no universal method that works, <coughs> especially for nonlinear systems. Um, so let's uh, um, let me let me define what the, what the Lyapunov function is and what this method does. Okay, so we're going to consider a system. And Rn, okay, and it's autonomous. So we're gonna stay with autonomous systems, okay. And uh, let's take x star to be an equilibrium. Point. So in other words, it's a zero for this right hand side, you know, could be a system of equations. Okay. And let's assume that uh, there exists a function um, L Define on some neighborhood, on some neighborhood, of the point x star. So I call it O. Um, such that. L decreases, I'm sorry, it does not increase, I should, I should be, does not increase along solutions x of t uh, with x naught belonging to this x of 0, x of 0 is x, x naught is um, in this neighborhood. So it starts in that neighborhood. Okay, so I have a function that is evaluated everywhere in the neighborhood. And 
as you evaluated a longer point that is a, you know is a, is on the is a solution of this differential system that l is not an, is not an increasing function okay so in other words the derivative with respect to t of l of x of t is less than or equal to zero. Okay. Now, we'll see. We'll see examples of this, but. Um, imagine that L is just imagine a linear system and you have a zero, zero is the equilibrium and you have distance from the origin Okay. if, if that zero is a sink so the solution kind of spirals in then the radius distance from the origin is not increasing, it's actually decreasing okay. or if you have a stable equilibrium then the um, for a linear system, so you have periodic solutions like that, right? Then, what, again, the distance from the origin stays constant, right? In both cases, it, it's not an increasing uh, function, okay? Well, such a function is actually called Lyapunov function. Such a function is called Lyapunov function. For this system, for x, for the system, and of course, it, on that neighborhood of the equilibrium. So, okay. All right. Uh, well, I guess. Before I, I state this stability result, which is the uh, the main thing here, as I said, let me show a few examples. So let's say I have uh, the well, let's say I have x prime equals x, uh, excuse me, y and y prime equals minus x. Um, okay, I want something that goes towards. Zero, so I would have to put some friction, right? So I have to put minus y or something like that. Okay. Then, when you look, well, that's already linear. So when you look at the metrics, zero, one, negative one, negative one, eigenvalues, what are I having negative real parts, right? Probably, most likely, right? Because that's that's just a damped pendulum. Um, and so the picture will look like this. So it has, okay, and zero is the equilibrium. Well, what would be a Lyapunov function for this? Well, the Lyapunov function has to be a function defined on a neighborhood. In this case, it will just be defined on the whole thing. Um, can somebody give me? An expression. So just something that decreases, not in, doesn't increase along along solutions. What what is that? What is something that does not increase? In fact, decreases along solutions. For for that for that for that solution. Or something spiraling in towards the origin. The radius, the distance from the origin, right? Distance from the origin. 
distance from the point where you're at to the origin is decreasing in this case, right? So distance is x squared plus y squared, right? With a square root. Forget the square root, so the square of the distance is decreasing, right? But you don't need the, the negative. You don't need the negative to... Because this is what's decreasing. The negative would be increasing, actually. This quantity, if you evaluate it along the solutions, is non-increasing, is actually going to zero, because you have the picture. I mean, you know the picture. And that's because it's a sink, because it's, it's coming in. Right. So yeah, so I'm just giving an example of this system, and because I have a sink of a linear system, and I know the solutions, Um, well, let's 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 make sure because I haven't really let's make sure of this. So let, let's uh, how do we vary? How do we check something like this? How do I if I if I say this is decreasing along solutions? How would you check it? Take the derivative with respect to time and x. And y would be the functions of t that solve that system, right? So the derivative with respect to time of L of x of t, y of t, right, would be just, well, how, how do we take the derivative? It's partial of L with respect to x times dx dt plus partial of L with respect to y times dy dt. Okay. What's partial of L with respect to x? It's 2x, right? And what's, what's x prime? Uh, well, x prime, what we see it's above, plus 2y, y prime. So let's see. 2xy right? x prime is y, plus y prime is 2y minus x minus y. So this looks like it's, is what? 2xy minus 2xy minus 2y squared, so it's minus 2y squared. So this is not ne not positive, non-positive, non uh, yeah, it's uh, non-positive. Okay? So the fact that this derivative along a solution curve is, not, is less than or equal than zero, basically qualifies this as, as, a, as a Lyapunov function. Okay? So a Lyapunov function is a function that is not increasing along solutions in the neighborhood of an equilibrium point. That's all it is. Okay? How to find this function is basically very tricky. <coughs> How to, how, to, how to find the Lyapunov functions is it can be extremely tricky. Okay, so um, okay, so this this means that L is not increasing along solutions, and you can say just a little bit more. You can say, can you say that L is actually decreasing based on this? And if the derivative is not is less than or equal to zero, can you say that L is therefore decreasing? A function if it has a derivative that's that's negative or zero could be flat, right? Could be decreasing, then stay flat, then decreasing. Just it doesn't increase, right? But it could stay flat. Now it could stay flat as long in this particular case if y were zero, right? But y is zero, you know, is, is y always zero? Well, so, so there is there's additional stuff that one have to, has to go through to basically conclude that L is therefore decreasing. Okay? Yeah? So it's not necessarily the function L itself, but the function L at our points. Yeah, but it's, you see, it's the function L at, on any solution. So in the end, it's it's basically the function L on the entire neighborhood. 
is how it behaves that function along solutions for any initial condition. So you start not just on one particular one. You see, I, this computation doesn't require that I specify an initial condition. It has to be that, right? It's any initial condition that covers that, and you just follow L as you as you uh, move along solution, starting at that, that, that arbitrary initial condition, basically. So in the end, it's a property of the, as we'll see in a second, it's, it's, it's a property of the function L. And the function L will, will be given, you know, like a, just a function of two variables, for instance. It's not going to be any function that has uh, any connection, any obvious connection with the actual system. In fact, there's a, like like there's a question here, and let's let's just answer it together. Um, well, okay, n not yet, because it says strictly up on a function. So let me let me introduce that, and 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 also. Um, Uh, so let me let me let me talk about this theorem, which is called the Lyapunov stability. Okay, and it says the following. So um, if if x star is an, is a, is an equilibrium and L is a function. Uh, a differentiable function on a neighborhood of this of the equilibrium satisfying uh, these two conditions that L at the equilibrium is actually zero and L at any point other than the equilibrium is positive and B that L is non-decreasing so uh, okay let me let me introduce this notation so the, if you want the derivative, the time derivative of L along solutions, I should say. Um, so, okay. I'll just write it a long way. Okay, so d by dt of L along solutions. is less than or equal to zero for um, okay I'm gonna have to put a time zero for x zero belongs to this domain in other words the second condition is just says that L is a Lyapunov function okay so it's a Lyapunov function because it's non-increasing along all solutions starting in that neighborhood Okay. Then this is a stable <coughs> equilibrium. So you see, the only uh, extra condition is that L has a minimum at that point. You see, has L is zero, and it has, zero is not important, but that it, it's zero at at the equilibrium and it's actually above zero so it's a, it's a minimum point right so this is saying that x star is a minimum point and this is saying that l is non increasing along solutions okay then the conclusion is this is stable okay uh, moreover if L satisfies uh, the fact that not only it's non-increasing along solutions, but it's more, more strict. It's that it's decreasing along solutions, strictly decreasing. So 
that the derivative is required to be strictly less than zero for x not uh, belongs to this neighborhood minus this minus the the equilibrium. Okay. You have to exclude the equilibrium itself because the equilibrium itself is a is an a steady state, right? So L would be just constant, right? So derivative would be zero. But if it's not if it's strictly less than zero, when you start nearby but not at the equilibrium, then X star is asymptotically stable. So in which case, in uh, the latter case, uh, L is called strict Lyapunov function. Okay, so these statements are actually, I mean, need, need some proof because you see, just from the fact that you have a Lyapunov function to the conclusion that the equilibrium is stable and you know with this even a stronger statement that it's asymptotically stable is um, you know there's a gap right between the two um, so let's see how much time I have because I'd like to I'd like to kind of go through this proof because it it really is um, relevant I think let me do a quick example so you see this uh, happening how this is happening here so um, look at number six for instance if I have x prime equals minus 2x minus y square and y prime is minus y minus x square and I'm looking at the uh, zero zero equilibrium okay I believe that's the only one so but okay so we're asking uh, can we conclude that this equilibrium is stable or asymptotically stable by constructing a Lyapunov function. Now, if you were trying it differently, then how would you... I mean, how would you conclude that this is sort of asymptotically stable? Or a sink? Hmm? You'd have to linearize this around zero, right? And then you would look at the eigenvalues of the linearization, and you would conclude that it's asymptotically stable, right? And I think this is, I mean, you can do it that way. So you, if you linearize this, it's going to be what? Negative 2, 0, 0, and negative 1. So it's going to be negative 2 and negative 1 will be the eigenvalues. So we know it's asymptotically stable. Okay, so we know um, zero zero is a um, sink since the linearization that's df at zero zero is this is a negative two zero zero negative one right so this has well this is for the linearization and then we can say well the nonlinear system is conjugate to the linearization so in the neighborhood of the origin it does look like right so this is linearization uh, looks I don't know looks like this right 
So the fully nonlinear, we know it looks somewhat similar, right? But for instance, um, we don't know what happens or how far this property extends, right? How far are points attracted to the origin, right? We don't know what happens. Based on this method, we don't know what happens or how far it happens that solutions are attracted here, right? Going in, thank you. Yeah. Everything's going in, but only in some neighborhood, right? So this Lyapunov method is is not only going to tell you that you have a you know asymptotically stable equilibrium, but it also can tell you what that neighborhood, how big that neighborhood should be or is, that attracts where the solutions get attracted to the equilibrium, right? That's called a basin of attraction. So let's so so let's first find a Lyapunov function and then then kind of figure out what the basin of attraction is. Okay, so uh, any guesses? See the idea. The whole idea is so uh, constructing. A Lyapunov function for the system can be tricky. Many times uh, you, you may not even f be able to find one, right? So the question is, in what form should you look for, and, and how should you do? You know, how should you proceed? Um, well, the the whole idea is is, is this: is you have derivative of solutions, of, of L along solutions, right? And we, we said this is partial of L with respect to X times X prime plus partial of L with respect to Y times Y prime, right? So what you're trying to do is you're trying to come up with with some function that you multiply the X prime with, some function that you multiply Y prime with, when you add them together, you get something strictly negative, well, or, or, or non-positive, okay? Uh, say it again. You mean what? What should be the first one, and what should be the second? No, I'm just saying if you. Oh, x plus y is, is x a. X plus y, you get derivative of one. One and one. Okay, so you're saying one and one. Yeah. So if you multiply one, the first one, and one, the second one, you add them together. It's all negative. Well, why is it negative? Because you have two x plus y. No, because it'd be one times that which is negative plus one times that, which is negative. So the whole equation would be negative. Because it would be negative of 2x plus y squared plus y plus x squared. It would all be negative. Except when x and y are negative. Yeah, that's why I'm, I'm if x and y are both negative, so it's not... A, you want to you want to have this property th on a whole neighborhood of the point. No, no, that's that's. I mean, that's I guess the first thing to try is, uh, you know. Uh, one one thing though that I should say is that when you say x plus y is the Lyapunov function, does this satisfy that it has a minimum? No, because x plus y is actually plain, right? So it's actually it does it's not. Remember what, what we said we would like to have? This property first, so that L is zero at that equilibrium and it's, it's positive outside everywhere else, right? So it has to be at least quadratic. Of quadratic, fourth order, right? Third order is not good, right? So 
so I think we should try with something that is probably quadratic in x and quadratic in y. Right? Now, the first thing would be x squared plus y squared, probably. You know? Or some combination. It doesn't have to be x squared plus y squared. It could be some constant times x squared and some constant times y squared, right? So I told you, it's I mean, it's tricky to actually guess, right? And it's always tricky to guess. And the problem is that there is no systematic way to search for for a for a Lyapunov function. Yeah. Sure, yeah. Because so, you're around the origin, so you, you can have all signs possible. So if x prime y prime are all positive? Well, we don't know. Just say for instance. Okay. Like we were given an x prime y prime positive guys, x prime. Okay. Um, function, um, the function doesn't necessarily have to be negative still, because x prime could be negative. Well, the Apollon function, we want it to be always positive. It's always positive. Yeah. So. And a minimum at zero. Okay. okay. X squared minus y squared. Minus y squared. Um, if you add them, what do you get? Negative 4x squared minus 2y squared. And the other one? That's it. No, that's total. So. so it's negative? Yeah. Uh huh. So you're saying, okay, so you're saying try L of x, y is x squared minus y squared. Okay, let's see if it works. I kind of have a, some doubts here, but... Okay. Huh? <laughs> no, 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 I mean... Uh, okay, negative, negative 2x and negative 2y, right? So then I have this. Okay, I'll introduce. That's just for simplicity. Is L dot is is really meant to to be that derivative at time equals zero. But again, the computation is always the same. So it's going to be two x x prime. So that's minus two x minus y squared minus two y. <laughs> There's a sign mis wrong, right? Minus y minus x squared. No, right. Let's see. So it's minus 4x squared plus 2y squared. Okay? But remember what we said? We try to look for, 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 for uh, Lyapunov functions that are, that are non negative, so that are positive. So x squared minus y squared is not not good, right? Because the hyperbola hyperbola is not right. Try try x squared plus y squared, right? What you get is you get a plus here and you get a minus. Uh, and what else? Minus two x y squared minus two y x squared, right? So then this problem, this gives you the problem, right? Okay, so you see, I mean, you, you get some terms that are, that are guaranteed to be negative, but you get other terms which are not, may not be always negative. So what's the, what's the goal? Is try to kind of multiply with something that, for instance, in this case, if you multiply by x squared, right? And y squared, excuse me, sorry, um, what do I want to say?
Okay, now let's see, because it was kind of clear what it, what it should be, but... Um, Okay, I'm um, sorry. I I thought I had it right, but no, I don't actually. Um, yeah. Is there a very situation where you can say X is greater than Y? I mean, I feel like you could all that, but you can't. No, because you want it to be in the whole neighborhood. So yeah. So it's not. It's so the only okay. So the only the only time you can guess this uh, is really when you can cancel terms that you know possibly could give you the wrong sign okay so the, the trick is to be able to multiply with um, with terms that when you know when you when you add these multiples together then for instance the terms of x square and y square cancel and you're left with uh, uh, or, or give you something that's always negative okay um, so I'm sorry. I kind of, I thought I thought I had it because <laughs> I did in my head. Yeah. Well, it cannot be negative two x. Right, you have to play with the C1 and C2. Make the neighborhood bigger or smaller. Well, to make it more... Uh, you couldn't make it to infinity. But. No, but you could make it more elongated in one direction than the other. Um, so, yeah, I think, I think a, a square function would, in x, y, but possibly with uh, C1 less, I mean, different than C2, uh, should, should do it. But, you know, it's not always possible. So that's the thing. It's, you, sometimes you may need the fourth power or something. Okay, so I'm sorry. I'll give you the uh, the exact Dapano function and uh, um, next time. But once you have it, and and most of the times you're not going to have to guess it. Okay, this was just kind of a, uh, a situation where I thought I, I I've had it, but. Uh, you don't have to guess the Lyapunov function. Sometimes the Lyapunov function is one of the standard ones, x squared plus y squared or something, or with different constants. And the idea is that you can use that to kind of uh, identify kind of the largest possible neighborhood for which the uh, Lyapunov function is decreasing on solutions. Okay? And that's going to be the largest set or the largest basin of attraction that solutions approach that uh, equilibrium, okay? Um, and so let's see, next time I want to, you know, I want to uh, quickly give you this. I mean, you, you feel free to kind of search on your own too. Um, and then I'll talk about the proof of that asymptotic stability thing.